Hi everyone, welcome back to Coding with Steph and part two of the Laravel validation tutorial. Last time we created this form, which is a pretty simple registration form, uh, checking for required information and valid email addresses and making sure that the passwords match. And we refactored that into a form request. Uh, and if you're interested in watching that video, there's a link up in the top corner of the screen right now. This time we're going to include some extra checks. We're going to create some custom validation rules and also have a play around validating data that doesn't come through a web form. So if you find this video useful, make sure you subscribe so you get all my future videos. And if you have any feedback, drop us a comment below. Other than that, let's get started. So typically a form like this will be saving to a database table. So I've got a pretty simple users table here and I've filled it with some example data. So if we take this email address here, we don't want somebody to be able to submit our form using that email address. So how do we go about that? Well, we can add a condition here called unique. And what unique will do is we'll give it a database table, in this case users, and also the field to check, so email. And then when we submit the form with an existing email address, it will check against that table. And as you can see, the email address has already been taken exactly what we want. So if I just add a one there, yeah, that's valid. Pretty simple. So next, let's have a look at this department drop down here, which has a few set options, sales, customer support, etc. Say we wanted to validate this, but it's not required. So how do we do this? Well, if something's not required, you simply don't give it the required rule. But what we can do is we can make sure that one of the options in that select box is given and no other data. So in this case, we would define the rules as an array and we would use the rule class here uh, to set the in condition. And the in condition will take an array and we'll populate this array with our options. So sales customer support management and other. So now it will fail if we submit data that does not exist in that array. So we need an error message in the HTML. Uh, and we'll just take the styling here as well from one of the other fields. So everything matches up. Department, yeah. And then for this example, we'll just add another option to the select box. So as you can see, if I submit customer support, it's fine. If I choose another selected department is invalid. So it's checking against our rule. And then, yeah, yeah, what we actually need to do for this to be optional, we need to include a blank option in this array. Most rules will work, but because this is looking for set values, we need to include that there. Right, next, let's create a custom rule. And to do this, we'll use artisan. So PHP artisan make rule, and let's call this uh, contains test. And let's open that up. And the two functions you're concerned with here are passes and message. Let's say we wanted to validate for some reason that the word test is always included in a username. So in the passes method, we want to test the value and return true or false. So in PHP, you can do this using string position, value test not equals to false. Now, if we were using PHP 8, PHP 8 now includes string contains, which is a much nicer way to do this. But for now, I'll just leave that there. And then in the message, we can set what our default message will be if this fails. And we can include the attribute here, so it will merge in the field name.
Now let's add this to our username field in the rules. So we'll change this to an array. And then all we have to do is say new contains test. And as you can see, VS Code has included that for me. And now if we enter a username without test, yeah, this string must contain test. User test name works. As I mentioned last time, there's a huge amount of validation rules that Laravel makes available to us. They can all be found in Laravel's documentation. And I'll leave a link directly to that in the description below so you can go and check them out. So finally in this video, let's let's do some coding on the fly. I actually have a CSV here of bogus users. So say we wanted to import this CSV directly into the database, and let's create a command to do that. So php artisan make command import users. And let's open that up. Give it a command name. And we will pass in the file name here and then give it a description. So I've got a snippet here that I'll just include uh, just to speed things up. And all this will do is open up the CSV, look through each row and create for us an array called users. And let's have a look at what that array looks like just so that you can see. So we'll run our command, import users, users.csv. So yeah, here you can see it's creating an array for us with four fields in each row, username, email, password, password confirm. So this could easily have been provided to you by a client or uploaded via a form. And you don't necessarily know that this data is all valid and there could be thousands of rows in the CSV. So let's create a custom validator so that we can use our existing validation rules to make sure this data is okay to put in our database. So we want to use Illuminate support for SARD validator. We say validator make, and then we can give as the first parameter uh, user data for this row. And then we want to include the rules. So let's just take the rules from here. Uh, we don't need the department rule. And let's get rid of our contains test, clean this up a bit. So now we're just validating any array to make sure that the data is okay. So we can say, if the validator fails, then we don't want to put that in our database. So we can just spit out in the console here an error and we can get validator errors first. And then we can say else passes validation, so we can insert it in our database. But for now, we'll just display a message on screen saying it's okay. So user username imported successfully. Great, let's try this out imported successfully on most of them, but that first one already exists in our database, so it's failed as we expected. So as you can see, you can actually be creative where you use validators. It's not always forms. And it's important to remember that you can validate any data as long as it's in an array. And there are situations where that can actually be really useful. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. As I said before, I'll be posting Laravel tutorials regularly on my channel. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any content. And I'll see you on the next one.